I'm going to be showing you how to use ZeroNet. Now, if you've never heard of ZeroNet, put basically, it's a decentralized internet platform. Anyone can make websites and post content without the need for any sort of centralized server. It uses BitTorrent technology and Bitcoin cryptography and a bunch of other things to make things fast and secure. If you've never heard of this, feel free to watch this video and hopefully I can kind of interest you on this. If you do know what ZeroNet is, then in this video I'm just going to be showing you all the basics of how to use it and even set up your own website. So let's get started. First you're going to need to go to the ZeroNet.io website and download the version for your system. I am using Windows, so I'll click this one here. Alright, now go ahead and extract that somewhere we can use it. Alright, now once you've downloaded this, just go ahead and double click zeronet.exe. And now we get to the Zero Hello web page. Now this is basically the start page of Zeronet. So let me explain this a little bit. On the left, this is all the websites we can go to. Right here, this is showing how many people are currently seeding this website. So now when I click on Zero Name, for example, we are taken to this website. Now, I'm sure this isn't much of a website, none of this probably makes sense to you, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now to go back to the main start page, we have this little button over here, so we're just going to go ahead and click that and go back. So, like I said, there was 59 people seeding this. That means when I click this button to go to this website, I'm not downloading this from one central server, like www.zeroname.com. I'm downloading this from 59 separate people. That means I can download this much faster than a normal website. Furthermore, if anything was to happen to whoever the first person was who made that website, like, I don't know, maybe the power went out, or maybe they dropped a hard drive with the website on it, it doesn't matter because that's just one person. There's still 58 other people who have this website that can send it to me. So that's a little bit about how this decentralization works. But enough about that, let me just show you some of the websites we have available here. Now if you scroll down here, either on the left at More at Zero Sites, or you can also find it here, we can click the Activate button. And what that does is it tells the swarm that all the people that are connected to that, hey, I'm looking for this website. Anyone who has this website should send it to me. And as you can see, it's currently loading it from all these people. And if we go back to the main page, we can see this is all the updates it's gathering. Every time this website is updated, somebody has got a copy of the update, and now they're sending that to you. So let's just go ahead and open that and see what we have. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of blogs on here. You have services, forms and boards, and just a whole bunch of different categories you can choose from. Now I'm just going to choose a completely random website here. We'll go to Zero Blog. Here we are, we are asking for this website, and now we have it. This is just the official blog from the creators of ZeroNet. They mostly just post things about ZeroNet itself, like for example, here we have kind of an update report or change log or whatever you want to call it. People can comment, they can make new posts, all sorts of things. So now we go back to the start page and you can see that this zero blog is actually interacting with our start page now. Where before we had all these right here duplicated, now we have some actual information we can put on screen. So what this is doing is taking all the posts from Zero Blog and listing them here in kind of a timeline type thing. Now right now all of these posts are from Zero Blog. However, if we were to go in and add a couple other blogs or maybe something like Zero Me or other things like this, other websites would be able to add posts to this right here, kind of like a Facebook timeline. Right here it would show which website the update is coming from, and on the right it would say whatever the update is. And you have a search, you can filter by post, all sorts of things like that. Next I'm going to show you just how easy it is to make your own blog. Now a lot of websites have this function here. Zero blog, the one we just looked at. If I click these three dots right here, you'll notice there's a clone button. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And here we go, we have our own zero blog. We can go ahead and rename this to 
IT blog, and then go down to the bottom right here and click save. I can edit this post. Go down and click save again. Or I can go up here and add a completely new post. Just click this little pencil here, change the title to whatever you want. Go down here and save. And now that we've made it all these changes and created our blog, what we're going to do is go to the bottom right here where it says sign and publish. Now, what does that mean? Well, first we're signing this website with our private key. Websites on ZeroNet don't use a simple username password system. Instead, every website has a public key, every user has a public key, and every user has a private key. If you've never heard of a public-private key pair, this might not make much sense, but basically there's a file on your computer that acts like your password. Signing this website uses that file to say that, hey, I am the creator of this website and I approve of these changes. Now, why is that important? Well, like I said, that other website had like 200 people that were sending it. Whenever you got on there and clicked to visit the website, you're basically asking everybody, hey, please send me this website. Well, what if somebody did that for our website here? Let's say somebody wanted to go to our website we just made. So they get out and they ask everybody, hey, please send me this IT blog. Well, what's to stop someone from going in here and say, adding some sort of malware or virus or something to this website. Well, whenever you sign something, you're basically certifying that, hey, this version of this website is correct. Any other version, like anyone making unauthorized changes, is not correct. And I won't get into the cryptography or anything like that, but basically, if somebody does not have your private key on their computer or your password, then they can't sign this website. Now, I'm sure that probably bored a ton of you, and I apologize. But basically, if that doesn't make sense to you, just know that all of this is cryptographically secure. So now let's change this back to something else. Sign and publish. And if you notice I'm getting these messages up here, no peers found, that means that there's nobody currently looking at my website. So while I am making these changes, nobody is getting these changes because nobody's actually looking at it. Speaking of changes, let me fix this typo here. I'm not perfect people, everyone makes mistakes. All right, so let's just go back to the home page. Now, as you can see, we have another blog on here. So this blog we just made is now able to add things to this website. So that's pretty much the basics of how to find ZeroNet websites and use them. If you want to go ahead and get started, there you go. Now, I'm just going to go through some of the settings and things like that, just, just a little extra stuff, so feel free to leave this video and go try this out, but if you want some more information, stay tuned. So this is a list of all the sites we have, everything we have downloaded. This is a site of everything that we own. We have the private key to these websites, meaning we can edit them and change them. Now you can also favorite a website, which will add its little own category here. Next we'll go onto the files tab. And this is telling me how much these websites are using on this computer. Every time you visit a website, you are downloading that website and it stays on your computer. Say when I go to zero blog, I have downloaded part of that blog. Now anyone else who wants to visit Zero Blog, I am able to send them that blog from my computer. ZeroNet will do this automatically. Now if we go to the stats page, we can see just how much we've actually sent. So right here you can see there are currently 454 people also connected to ZeroNet. All of them, 14 of these people are actively connected to me. We have downloaded 14.61 megabytes of stuff from other people on ZeroNet, and we've uploaded almost 2 megabytes. Here you can see kind of which websites are using all of this data. You can see which countries we're sending this stuff from. It's just a whole lot of random information here that some people like. Now if we go back, 
we can go up here and you can update every site you can change a system theme I prefer the dark theme myself change your language you can create a new completely empty site where here we made a zero blog which cloned that blog there we can also start with a completely empty one next we'll go into configuration what this does is automatically opens your browser to ZeroNet every time you double click on the ZeroNet button. Offline mode, because all of these websites are downloaded to our computer, we're able to turn on offline mode and still browse these websites even though we're not on the internet. Now your server network, server port, server IP, these are all used if say you have a specific setup on your network and you need to port forward things differently or something like that. For most people you'll never have to worry about this. Here we have Tor set to be enabled. This means that you're connected to Tor so anyone that's currently on Tor is able to download your website and you're also able to download websites from other people and you're also able to download websites from other people on Tor. You can also disable this completely if you don't want to use Tor or you can set to always use Tor, which forces all of your connections through Tor. Tor bridges. If you have a network level Tor block, as it says here, this will kind of proxy your Tor through somewhere else before getting to Tor. Uh, most people aren't going to need this, but if you do, there it is. <coughs> These trackers here are what keep a these trackers keep track of all the different peers. These keep track of who you can connect to to download websites from and things like that. And if you want to be able to load more trackers, you can do that here. And if you prefer to use a proxy, you can make all these go through Tor. By default, ZeroNet logs pretty much everything, but you can change that here if you'd like to. And now we'll go back and look at the plugins. As you can see there's a lot of these turned on by default and most of them are pretty helpful. For example, announce local. If you have a laptop and you have a computer and they're both on the same Wi-Fi, announce local will let these two clients find each other without having to go through the internet. If you go down here to content filter, you can blacklist websites and users, that way you can't see any of their content if you choose to. There's just a whole lot of things like this. You can even set a password where people need to enter a password before they can go to your Zero Hello website or the rest of ZeroNet. Uh, it's worth noting that this doesn't actually encrypt anything, but it's just a password for people accessing the website. Next, on the top right, if you notice whenever we hover over this little home button here, it changes to a hamburger menu. Yes, that is, that's what those three lines are called. It's called a hamburger. I don't know, I didn't invent that word. But anyways, we can either click that to go back to the main screen, or we can drag it off to the left. And that's where we get this little globe you saw earlier. This is showing where all of your data is transferring from, where all your peers are at. I mean, it's really not too useful. It's just kind of cool to see where all these people are using ZeroNet from. And like we saw earlier with the data, this will show you specific data for one site. How much data have you received from this website? How much have you downloaded? How much have you sent? You can open the site directory, and like I said, all these websites are being saved to your computer. So if you click here, this will actually open this website's folder on your computer. Next, you have a default limit of 10 megabytes per website. That way, if you go to a website who has like hundreds of gigabytes of content, it won't start downloading the whole thing automatically. The website will ask you, hey, will you allow us to download this much content? And here you can change that default limit. Next we have your identity. Like I said, this doesn't use username and passwords, but for all intents and purposes, this identity here is basically your username. Again, this is another way to update the website. 
This is the site's website address. And if it's your website, this will be ticked, and you can change some things here, like the title, description, and, and another way to sign and publish. However, this is not our website, so changing any of this will not work. And that's about it for this introduction to ZeroNet. If you're looking for more websites to check out, Zero Sites is, of course, a great place to start. So are all these other ones. In fact, if we go to Zero Sites, you can actually see there's other ones here, such as Zero List, which are even more websites that you can look at. If you have any questions or anything, go ahead and post those in the comments. I will get to those as soon as I can. Uh, if you want more videos or anything like that over ZeroNet, again, post in the comments and I'll do what I can. Uh, one last thing. If you notice up here, my port is closed. This usually isn't a big deal unless you're hosting your own website. Right here it's telling me port 12865 is closed, but my Tor gateway is running well. If we're hosting our own website, you really want to open up that port. Now, I'll have to save that for another video because port forwarding is completely different depending on which router you use and things like that. But a quick Google search will probably tell you how you can port forward if you need to. And lastly, the proper way to shut this down is to go down here and click shut down ZeroNet. It'll ask you if you're sure up here, and once you click this yellow shutdown button, it should close.